our friend Nathan Howdeshell decided to start a record label. He'd actually started the label years before, but he was transitioning it into something official. And he asked a band that I was in to do a 7-inch that became an LP that was then going to be recorded in a house, converted into a studio, which then was going to be done at the Gossip's practice space. And then finally, when none of that panned out and we were already on our way up there, he booked Jackpot with this guy, Jeremy Scher. The weird thing about that record is that we pulled up and on our way, my friend Maddie Hunter had hit me up and said, do you need a place to stay? And we said, sure, you want to play bass on a record and be in a band? And he was like, awesome, fair trade. So we practiced one time all of these songs, some of which didn't even have vocals, um, and then went into this studio with this album that was like equally realized and unrealized. It's a, it's a weird way to put it. Um, but we did it in three days. There's a surprising lack of symbols because the majority of the songs were written on a drum machine. And I don't think we ever really thought to put them on there because drum machine symbols sound so terrible. Um, Songs like See It Out, Within This Mass, Be Alone, were ones that I wrote um, as I was kind of transitioning out of the last band that I had done into what I thought would be the, the next material for that same project before Soft Kill was born.
Everything aligned in a way that it was supposed to. Um, we had really no idea what we were doing in a studio. None of us had ever spent any significant time in a nice enough studio to have perspective. Um, we ended up with the perfect person who had like a very defined vision for what he heard off the demos. Um, we really can't take credit. I mean, we can take credit for the songs and, and, the, and the, the lyrics and the melodies, um, the minimalist approach that we took. No one told us to do it differently than that. But it was Jeremy's idea to not double vocals um, and to just really emphasize the space that was left in the room due to there really just for the most part being one guitar and a bass and drums, and then synthesis, either reinforcing the bass or creating some sort of arpeggiation or melody. Um, he just, it, it made it sound like us. It made it sound like something unique instead of uh, just emulating all the stuff that people assumed we were influenced by, even though that really wasn't the case. I just think, to reiterate what I already said, just as uniquely itself, um, it's not overthought. We were limited in our abilities. I think there's a lot of bands that hear this type of music or hear specific bands and they understand the language of it. They understand how to recreate it really easily and I don't think I've ever been very good at that. Um, Justin and myself just really coming from punk rock. Shiloh coming from punk rock just like a lot of style and substance, but like not very much ability, <laughs> you know? Just you try to do something and it comes out completely different and it just turned out to be our voice.
Oh, God. Um, I feel like we booked it like 10 days beforehand. We had blown off Jason Powers, who was doing, doing the album. I was just like a total mess. I was living in Chicago and just didn't even want to get on a plane to come out to Portland and attempt to try any of the stuff we were talking about. It almost felt like we didn't have uh, a full album, and in a lot of ways we didn't. We just had demos that I had accumulated, like Whirl and Lost and Feel the Knife and whatnot, and these other ideas like Wake Up and Frankie that were coming from collaborations between... Owen and myself, or Owen and myself, and Conrad, um, we were just doing these marathon writing sessions.
the three of us just like playing guitars and bass and locking into these weird riffs and realizing that all of our approaches were just so removed from one another but seemed to fit in this really cool way and once again jumped into a studio with little to no preparation and even seemingly even less understanding of than the time before <laughs> You know, like, I don't, I just don't think we knew what the fuck we were doing. Um, you know, we didn't change, we changed the bass strings the day before. You never do that. Um, we did, like, a couple takes of every guitar. If we didn't just, like, blatantly fuck up, it was left. And there's so many little flubs and nuanced fuck-ups on that record that drive me absolutely insane. Um, all the vocals were just like kind of busted out in one sitting. And in reality, we were really, I guess, just in there for four days.
I think obviously Whirl was the stand standout track from from that record, but a lot of people ask about Frankie and sort of uh, what that song is about, content wise, and also just sort of the complexities. I don't want to talk about that song.
it was next to no time, and then all of the remaining synth stuff outside of Whirl was done the final day when Owen showed up from from an engagement that he was, a tour that he had been on, um, a modern English tour that I had booked and that he had driven them and tour managed. And we were just like, you have eight hours to do all of the synths. <laughs> so it was this rushed, bizarre thing. And then it was sent across the country to Ben Greenberg, who delivered us back something that I remember when we heard it initially, by the time Frankie hit, we were just like in tears because we couldn't believe it because we just didn't understand the art of production and mixing and that we were capable of something that, um, much like an open door, just like translated to something completely different once it got into somebody else's hands. Does it feel crazy to you that it's five years old already? No, nah, it depends on the day. Like some days I feel like that was five years ago and other days it feels like five minutes. It was just like a, such a fucking shit show.
Ask for my money, give me my own head, rocking away. 